Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. It's been a while since I've had a video, but we're back with some more content. Today I'd like to take a look at a very useful Linux application called Warpinator that allows you to easily transfer files between your Linux PCs and Android phone, if that's what you're into, but we'll get more into that later. As you can see, we have the Warpinator interface here on the screen, but before we dive into that, We'll take a look at a little bit of information about it and some of its key features. First off, Warpinator was originally developed by the Linux Mint team, which is the distribution we're running here, but has since been made available for nearly all Linux distributions, and we'll look at installing that on various distributions later. For now, we'll start by looking real quickly at some of the key features. Of course, we've got our obvious ones here. It's an open source and free piece of software for Linux. It has a simple and easy to use interface. We'll be diving into that in a moment. It will automatically detect other computers on your network that are running Warpinator and show them in the list for you to easily connect and transfer files. As it says here, you can connect to several different computers. It also has various settings to manage the ports and firewall rules to make sure that everything works correctly. Uh, you can choose to accept or deny incoming file transfers, especially important if you are sending files to other users' devices. And there's all sorts of configuration options for group codes, which we'll get into in a moment. This allows you to have, theoretically, multiple different sessions of devices on the same network, uh, independently from one another. So, to get Warpinator, if you're using a recent version of Linux Mint, there's a good chance that it's already installed. And you can just go into your Applications menu and search for Warpinator. If Warpinator isn't installed, then it's worth going into the Software Manager in Linux Mint and doing a quick search for it, as it may be in there for you to download. As you can see here, it's already installed on this system. If Warpinator isn't available in the Linux Mint Software Manager, likely because you're running an older version, or if you're running a different Linux distribution, then you'll need to install Warpinator through Flatpak. I'll show you how to do that now. For this, we'll switch over to Ubuntu as an example. So here we are in Ubuntu as an example of our other distribution that doesn't have Warpinator natively available. And real quickly, we'll see that a search for it in the Software Center returns no results. So we will have to install this via Flatpak. To do this, we do have a couple terminal commands to run in case Flatpak isn't already installed. So what we're going to do is open up our terminal. And first, we want to make sure that Flatpak is installed. So to do this, we'll do sudo apt install Flatpak. Press enter and enter our password. Enter our password correctly. And here we go. It says that Flatpak isn't installed. We will press Y and then enter to confirm installation. And now that is completed. Next, we need to add the Flatpak repository into our software catalog. So that will be this command here, flatpak remote-add-if-not-exists, flathub, and then this URL. For the sake of convenience, I'll copy this into the terminal. And of course, I will leave a link to this in the description. And it asks us again to confirm with our password. And now that has been completed. And finally, we're going to do flatpak install flathub org.x.warpinator, which is the name of the application. 
And again, we'll press Y and then enter to confirm installation. And here's a summary of what it will do. Y and then enter to confirm. Now it's installing. This will just take a couple of moments. I'll skip ahead in the video to save a little bit of time. Alright, so that just finished. It took a couple of minutes, but through the magic of video editing, you guys didn't have to wait very long. So let that go a couple of minutes, it, it will take a bit of time. But now we will see that Warpinator is installed on our system. Now a quick note, you may have to restart your computer after installing if Warpinator doesn't show up in your application list, so no need to worry about that. Just give your computer a quick reboot and then it should show up. If we search for Warpinator, there it is in our application list. And that will be the process for installing it in any other distribution other than Linux Mint. So speaking of Linux Mint, as you can see, since the application is running on both of our computers and they're both on the same network, it automatically shows the other computer running here. Uh, it shows my user and the computer that it's on. So we'll actually switch back over to the Linux Mint machine for the time being. As you can see, it's showing the Ubuntu computer right now. Before sending those files over, we'll take a quick look at some of the configuration that you can do with Warpinator to customize the experience. We'll click the menu button here at the top left and go to Preferences. So we have an option to show a notification icon for Warpinator in the indicator area whenever it's running. Uh, you can choose to start Warpinator with the main window open or disable this so that the window doesn't open and it just shows the icon down here when you start Warpinator. And you can choose to have Warpinator start automatically when your computer turns on. Regarding the file transfers themselves, we have use compression when possible. This will attempt to compress all of your files down to a smaller size so that it's not using as much network traffic. Also, we can pick the location that we want saved files to go. By default, this is in a Warpinator folder in your home directory, but you can pick anything that you would like. We also have an option to require approval before accepting files. This will ask you whenever someone sends a file if you wish to approve or deny it. If you only intend to send files between your own devices and don't feel the need to be asked, you could turn this off to just always approve file transfers. This next one would require to ask for approval if any files have to be overwritten. For example, if you sent the same file twice or an updated version of a file that you already have, it will ask if you wish to overwrite the existing file or not. And finally, we have the option to display a notification when someone sends or at least attempts to send files to you. This will show a notification whenever you receive a file transfer. And finally, under connection, we have options to adjust various port settings for the network traffic. Uh, you can adjust these if you have a firewall set up that may be affecting those transfers, and you can also change your group code. So what this group code does is allows you to create multiple groups on the same network. By default, if these are all using the same group code, which by default is Warpinator, then every computer on your network that is running Warpinator will show up in the list. However, if you have groups of computers that you wish to uh, only see specific ones of, you can set different group codes. For example, if you have different, multiple people on the network that wish to send files between their own computers but not see other people's devices, you could set the group code to your name, for example, on all of the computers that you're using Warpinator on. Someone else could set their group code to their name or something unique to their devices. So you will only see devices on your network that are using that same group code. Now we've taken a look at a few of the settings. We will begin by transferring these three sample files here. We'll take a quick look at these first, just so we know what we've got and make sure they transfer correctly. There's a brief sample video here. Hmm. 
Uh, maybe we won't watch the whole thing, but <laughs> we've got a sample document that will open up in LibreOffice. And we have a sample music file. So we will attempt to transfer these three files over to our Ubuntu machine. All we have to do is click on the machine we want to transfer to, and then click the Send Files button. If we have recent files that we regularly open, then we can go into Recents and see a list of the opened files here. Or we can browse the machine if we want to select them ourselves. Go to our desktop and select these three files we want. Alternatively, you can drag and drop files into the space and it will automatically add them. Now, it says our other machine is awaiting for approval and so if we switch over to the other machine we wish to receive these from, which is locked, we have a notification here that says new incoming files. I would like to send you three items. And in Warpinator, we also have an indicator. And we see our three files here. This is waiting for your approval. You can either hit the tick mark to accept or the X to refuse. We will accept these three files, and they've automatically been transferred and put in the default location that we've chosen, in this case, the Warpinator folder. So if we open up our Warpinator folder, there we have our three files. As you can see, these are perfectly intact as they were before. Hmm. Now this also works with folders. We'll switch back to our Linux virtual machine here, where we also have a folder containing the same three files. All you have to do is go once again to the PC we want here. We're still in the Ubuntu one. And we can just drag this folder in here. And switching back to our Ubuntu VM, once again, we have a notification. Waiting for our approval to accept this. We'll accept it. And now, once again, in our Warpinator folder, we have the entire folder that we just transferred. So this works with both individual files as well as entire folders. Really, anything that you're sending from one end will appear the same way on the other machine. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Warpinator is also available for Android. Now, note that this is an unofficial app. It's not affiliated with the Linux Mint development team. Uh, or anybody that created the original Warpinator app. However, it does seem to work perfectly fine and uh, integrates very well with the Warpinator desktop app. You can download it from the Google Play Store on your Android phone or most any other alternative app store that you may have. And once you've installed it, it works very much the same. If it's on the same network as your computers and has the same group code, which can be configured, you will see all of your devices in a list and you can easily send files either from your phone to your computer or your phone will show up on your computer where you can send files from the computer to your Android phone. Actually doing this is a bit outside the scope of this video, but I will leave a link in the description with more information on how to do that, as well as a link to the Google Play Store to download it directly onto your phone. So I've personally found Warpinator to be an incredibly useful application. It is something that I use all of the time. It's eliminated the need for me to either email myself files or upload them into the cloud just to pull them down again on another computer. It has streamlined file transfers for me and it's something I use every day. I hope that you find it just as useful and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you'd like to say about what I've covered today, feel free to write in the comments. If you've enjoyed this content, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in any more Linux software, uh, distribution reviews, and really everything else having to do with Linux, I ask that you please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and spreads the word. And to stay up to date with all of the latest content and news that I'm putting out, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98. 
Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.